So today we are presenting the Bayesian spatial models chapter, and this is about uh, inland models. And we will have a look how to understand these models, and we want to be able to fit a Bayesian model with inland for aerial data because this is still in the part of aerial data. And it is a model with spatial dependencies. So I have prepared these slides uh, to grasp the essence, but because some coachings with Inna, they take quite some time. It's um, I, I've then referred to the book to have a look at how the model object can be further explored. So I will use these slides to add a bit more background as well about in now than then I think it's really present in the book itself. All right, so it can fit a broad class of uh, generalized linear mix models, uh, including spatial and spatial temporal models. And those are the models that can be expressed as latent Gaussian mark of random fields. So it's, it's quite complicated matter. Uh, in my um, experience, uh, to, to really grasp the mathematical background of this, but it's not all too uh, difficult in a conceptual uh, way. So in uh, Bayesian modeling, a posterior distribution is estimated for every model parameter, which is very interesting because you then see a lot of the uncertainty regarding every aspect of uh, the model. And so the INLA algorithm, it uses uh, integration methods uh, as a fast approximation to obtain these posterior distributions. So for more complicated models, this is uh, way more efficient than the uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo uh, approximations for um, these posterior distributions of uh, par model parameters. Arilla also provides several criteria to compare uh, these models, uh, which are quite uh, common. Um, all right, so this is some general background. So we, we load the Inla package. It does not exist on Cron. It has a separate repository, but it has a website with the installation. Um, the installation and specifications. So the model for an observed response, Y, uh, I, uh, it needs the likelihood distribution, which uh, will normally be the from the exponential family, could be a normal or Poisson or something else. Uh, it uh, needs uh, an explicit, well, it needs a link function. Each likelihood distribution has its default, uh, but there are uh, several link functions available and it needs a linear predictor. So what does these thing, do these uh, things mean? Uh, so the likelihood distribution for an observed response, it is um, effectively the distribution of the response uh, for each uh, observation given, yeah, the linear predictor, which is composed of uh, extra information, uh, such as um, extra covariates, for example. And some of these distributions are the normal Poisson the binomial distributions, and each of these have their own uh, parameters. So, for example, the mean and the variance for the normal one, uh, the normal distribution, or the um, yeah the the the, um, the, the probability uh, for the binomial distribution, and these. Uh, parameters of those distributions um, are then uh, yeah, transformed, which we will see in the next slide. So this slide, it shows which likelihood families are available in inline. This is uh, quite impressive because it's a very long list of all different distributions for uh, response variables. For example, uh, beta distributions, binomial distributions, uh, we have Quite a lot also uh, for survival models, there's, also, there's often uh, a specific distributions, gamma distribution, Gaussian, logistic, uh, Poisson. There are really a lot and also quite a lot of zero inflated distribution. So it's, this is one of the real strengths I think, I think of the INLA package that is, has an enormous wealth of uh, 
ways to model your response. So the linear predictor, uh, it's a latent Gaussian random field. Uh, it is the model of a parameter of the likelihood distribution uh, transformed with a link function. So for example, if uh, the, it would be for a Poisson perhaps, uh, the average the mean of the Poisson distribution, you will transform it with a log link and the results then will be modeled uh, in terms of covariates, for example, like XI or random effects, which are included in this ZI. So you have uh, several components that you can include in this linear predictor. So the linear predictor, it can have, or it often has its own scale because there's the transformation with the link function between the linear predictor and the response variable, or at least the parameter of the distribution of that response variable, which is, well, uh, in the case of the mean, mu i, on the scale of the response variable. But in the case, for example, of binomial distribution, it's uh, the pi y, and that is not the response itself, but it is the um, probability of the binomial distribution. And then it will be a little bit transformed, uh, typically uh, like this, uh, to model it um, in a linear way, in the linear predictor. So this is, I think, always important to, to have in mind when um, fitting these yeah generalized linear mixed models with inla in R to to know okay we are working on the scale of the linear predictor or no we are working on the scale of the response and um what is the distribution of the response so importantly these have an index y which means that they are really the depending on the observation specific covariates and so the distribution of the response will also be depending on the specific observation specific parameter value. So there's a parameter value modeled and then the distribution for that uh, observation will follow from it. So it's not that uh, the distribution is fixed for all observations. So that's also uh, quite powerful. So the linear predictor contains both linear covariate effects um, which are just summed, uh, and in this case, it's um, um, it, these are matrices. So this is a um, a matrix of x values, and then a column matrix of the beta uh, coefficients uh, for each uh, covariance, including by default the intercept as well. So the first value of the x's is a one, which will be then multiplied with the beta zero so to speak. And so these infrequentist GLMMs, we would call these the fixed effects and then um, then move the random effects in the ZY um, component, which is also a, um, yeah, it can be composed of um, multiple uh, effects or it can be multiple terms. So Everything else goes in here, nonlinear effects, spatial time, seasonal patterns, random intercepts, and slope. And I just uh, found this in the manual, actually, from INLA. So one can really dive into what is available in INLA. Uh, you can do it like this. So in lot of models, then dollar sign likelihoods, and then you have a list of different likelihood functions, and these have properties such as which link functions are available. So this is um, not something we would have in the tidyverse, of course. That is quite um, it's really base R uh, functionality, but which we see here. But so we by default we will have the log um, link function in a gamma distribution. And um, for the latent models, um, which are used for the ZY, this is the, the latent models, we have also a long list as well. So one of the most commonly used, it's just for um, Gaussian random effects, it's IID. Um, but there are several others. I think this one is also used for spatial things, um, spatial dependencies. I think these will come later in the book. And in this chapter, you're actually 
looking at uh, BASAC and BYM and BYM2 um, models for the specification of the latent component. And um, this is the main function to fit a model in INLA. So it's the INLA function. It has a formula argument, which takes the, um, the structure of a linear predictor. It has a family argument, which defines the, um, the likelihood family. So in this case, uh, the default is Gaussian, which will just use the normal distribution and an identity link. So which means that the response variable is on the same scale as the linear predictor. It just adds the variance distribution. And um, so it has to be provided with data, of course. And there are way more arguments available in INLA, but these have been used, I think, in the book. Uh, so control.compute and control.predictor, we will see later. And also importantly, the linear predictor. So in the formula, it's um, yeah, it's a formula with, with just terms uh, separated by a plus sign, and the latent models are all uh, expressed via, uh, via the f function. It's uh, an inla function, the f function, and it takes uh, yeah, it takes the covariates uh, which the latent model needs to use. For example, for a IID random effect. So the um, um, yeah the simple random effects, and then also it needs the name of the latent model. For example, IID. And there's a nice package website. We can have a look at the website, the Inla project, um, with some documentation, uh, with the uh, quite a comprehensive manual, an official manual of this R package. Uh, it has some instructions how to install, but it's quite straightforward. It has its own ground-like repository, which is, so you can use with the installed packages to install it. And there are quite a lot of books available already. Some of them are freely available online. And the book that we are reading, I think it was also amongst these, so it's here. All right. So let's go back. So a bit more background about this BASAC York Mollier model, the BYM model. It is um, composed of two terms, it has a spatial random effect UI, which is modeled with a conditional autoregressive model, also called the BASAC model. And what this is about, it is um, really useful for the aerial data, which we are uh, using in the chapters up to now. So the UI, it's each I, it refers to another area. And so the U represents um, some random effect specific to each uh, area. And it is conditional on the uh, values of the other um, areas that are uh, surrounding it. So the delta I, it represents the neighbors of area I. And so it is assumed that the random effect of an area I is um, normally distributed with a mean um, defined by the mean of the random effects of the neighboring areas. And the variance is defined by the general variance of all random effects, but it has to be divided, divided by the number of neighboring uh, areas um, surrounding area I. So this is normal distribution, but it means that um, random effects will be similar amongst neighboring regions. So this is essentially, uh, a, let's say, a quite um, simple way of, of smoothing um, these random effects in a, in a spatial way. And 
On top of that, um, unstructured, so IID random effects are added uh, to capture remaining noise in the linear predictor. And, and this is uh, just a uh, general common um, normal distribution. And there is also the BYM2, which is a different parameterization of BYM. So um, essentially, you still have two terms. So it's the VY, which represents the random effects, and the UI, which represents um, the spatially uh, dependent uh, random structure. But the V is a parameter that will make um right, which will actually weight the these two different effects so if it is one you will only have the spatial random effect because this will become zero and the other way around so if this is zero uh, you will only obtain um the random effect so this is another way of um, dealing with this and i think uh, perhaps a bit more flexible Anyway, um, here is the code also to uh, get that the documentation, which is in the case of Inla, uh, a bunch of PDF files. So all these models, latent models, likelihood distribution models, um, they have uh, quite extensive documentation with PDF and you need to pause a regex string uh, to uh, get that specific PDF. And then it is really the definition of the model and the parameters of that model. Um, so this is uh, some more background about that. So then a few more words about the case that we are going to look at in the chapter. So there is a shapefile Boston tracts, uh, which has the response variable, I think the median house prices in Boston, and it has a whole lot of covariates. And the response variable is being called VBLE in the book, and it is the, uh, it's a transformed uh, response variable. So the housing prices uh, have been log transformed. And we have 506, um, yeah, um, areas, yeah, and 38 um, variables in this data frame, which is, it's an SF uh, object, the object map. So if we plot it like this, then, um, yeah, okay. We can see there's quite some uh, variation in the housing prices. So this is uh, on the log scale. And so we will model this logarithm using the per capita crime and the average number of rooms per dwelling. So essentially how big the houses are and how much crime is in an area. How does do, do these two um, covariates affect the response? And Another specific aspect, if we want to define a latent model based on the areas, uh, well, we need we need a covariate that represents the area. So there's uh, in the book um, a specific covariate or specific covariates are added that can represent it. So it's an index of each row. Uh, so it's just the row number which is added here. Um, both to represent the U and to represent the V um, terms of the linear predictor. The BYM2 also needs a spatial neighborhood list formatted for INLA, which is uh, very logical because it is indeed the distribution of this latent model is defined based on neighborhoods. So we can um, define with the SPDEP package, we can define the neighborhood lists. This is for polygons based on contiguous, um, um, based on contiguity, so between neighboring areas. And so this is uh, another function from the SPDEP package um, spe specifically tailored towards INLA. So it converts the uh, resulting um, neighborhood lists into a, yeah, it actually 
write a file um, in some yeah in the directory that you have to specify, of course, and so that has to be read by the inno.read.graph function to get another representation essentially of that neighborhood list. So if you look at the structure of this object, you will see yeah, another kind of representation of uh, which area is surrounded by which uh, neighbors. Um, then the formula of the, of the linear predictor. So the response, well, we have to, at the left-hand side, we have to define what is the response variable. At the right-hand side, we see the formula of linear predictor. So it's the uh, number of crimes, uh, the number of rooms. Well, the, I think it's not number of crimes, but it's uh, something uh, related to that, that represents uh, the amount of crime, the so um, availability of rooms, and the BYM two latent model, which we just base on an index of the um, of the houses, and it has to be provided. This is specific to the BYM two. It has to be provided the neighborhoods um, object, which is uh, which goes into the graph argument. So that's. It and then one can run in like this. So we provide that formula, which we had stored in the formula object. It's uh, we do it in, uh, with the normal likelihood. Um, we provide the data, and we say, well, control of predictor is list compute equal true, and this is about controlling the computation of fitted values at the scale of a linear predictor. So. The first um, statement or argument it is to make that fitted values and the posterior summary are computed. So posterior summary just means uh, the mean and a uh, few percentiles, and and also the uh, I think the standard deviation perhaps. And then you get the if the the model is uh, stored here in. Uh, the resulting model is res, and then if you have a look at res, one can see that there are uh, quite a lot of elements um, in that, and summary.fitted.values is one of them. And this will only be populated if you have provided control of predictor is uh, list compute is true. So one can uh, add more things to control how this is done uh, than this, but compute is true. Uh, makes them uh, populate this element so that the fitted values one for each um, for each house in this case will be present. And then you also have I always find this a bit confusing these names. So you also have uh, control dot compute and it is um, return dot marginals dot predictor is true that we have used here and it means that um, it returns the Posterior marginal distribution of the fitted values, and this is uh, well. These are actually five hundred and six uh, different distributions, one for each uh, fitted uh, housing price. Um, so it would be looking just at the first one, and that would already be a long matrix of all the um, components of the distribution. Um, we can perhaps have a look. And that because I fitted uh, the model, I think here somewhere. Um, all right, so we have rest, and if we we can see that it was there, and um, which what is the um, what is inside rest? Well, many many objects, elements, and yeah, uh, one of these is uh, summary dot fitted dot um, values. So it's somewhere, somewhere here. Um, right, it's this one. So you can have a look how this is uh, structured, or structured, but it will be hmm, like this. So it's data frame. So it's just 506 of the observations because it's a summary, it's still relatively comprehensive. So we have the mean, the standard deviation, and then some quantiles for 
each fitted value. So it's a posterior distribution that is used for this uh, each fitted value um, in the model. And yeah, these are the marginals. So that's something else. Um, so that was the summary of fitted values and the marginal of fitted values. And that was the next thing which we had with control.compute. So if we have a look at that, so we see it's a list of 506 elements. And, and the first element of that list, it says, well, uh, it's a data frame with uh, 40, uh, three rows and two columns. So it's, it's a matrix. And let's have a look at the first one. For example, it looks like this, and it's essentially is the density function of the posterior distribution. So it says um, for X having this value, this is the, the posterior density. So this is, um, yeah, normally you won't use this directly, but it is something that you need when you want to, for example, get these values on another scale. You want to log transform or back transform. Uh, so um, do the exponent, the exponential function applied, applied to it. And then you want the summary, then you have to do it on the marginals and then calculate uh, this uh, kind of summary again. But there are special functions for that. So we will see that in a, in a few moments. So let's go to the book. And so we had uh, this. So we have, um, yeah, exactly. We are going here. So the summary um, dot fixed, as you can see, uh, summary dot fixed means um, Give me the effects of the fixed um, of the fixed effect. So the the results or the model parameters essentially uh, for the fixed effect. So um, the crimes have a negative effect, and since um, both the lower and the upper um, limits of the credible interval are below zero as well, so it can be regarded significant. And the same is true for the number of rooms. So which has a positive, which has a positive effect on um, on the response. So there's also an intercept um, available, and so when we have a look at the fitted values, um, then you can see where we are. The fitted values that's that data frame of five hundred and six rows. So for each value, so but uh, it's again summarized here uh, to see what's the variation between all fitted values. But you can also uh, plot it, for example. I think this is being done here. So um, several columns are added to the map objects, uh, notably the mean, the lower and the upper quantile from, of the credible interval. And then these are mapped using map view. And uh, it also uses leaf sync to make it in sync if you pan or zoom, that it's everywhere the same. Personally, I think this is not this um, useful in this case, at least to depict the lower and upper um, limits of the credible interval simply because all the variation, uh, the spatial variation is actually um, um, made up by the means itself themselves. So the the um, credible intervals are quite small and it's the means that are moving around uh, from area to area. So you essentially see three times the same in these maps. So perhaps it would have been more useful, for example, to have just say two maps, one with the mean and one with, with the, the width of the credible interval, because then you would see the amount of uncertainty and probably there would be more and another kind of spatial variation. I, I didn't do it, but um, it's just a thought, but it's obvious that yeah, the, the main variation, it's just the variation um, caused by the mean being completely different from place to place. 
in the housing prices. So this more or less just reflects uh, just the re reflected response variables. And okay, what's happening here? Um, the aim here is to get the same, but on the scale of the original variable in the data frame. But because remember, we log transformed the housing prices. So this is still on a log scale and we want to get um, the credible intervals and the predicted mean on the original scale. So we have to do um, an exponent or apply the X function. And to do that, we have to use the inla.t marginal function, which transforms the marginal distribution. So it's what I showed here already. So it's this kind of matrix for each observation. So the, uh, the, the posterior distribution of the fitted values, which is going to be transformed. And yeah, it, it's even something which takes quite some time to calculate because you have 43, uh, well, it, it's a matrix of 43 rows and there are 506 such matrices. So, so it takes about, well, I uh, think 20 seconds or so um, to compute this. So it's the marginals and then you get, well, the marginals, it's just structured the same way as this, but it is being, um, it is already on the original scale because you did x per x. Of course, we we will not use these distributions directly. We have to calculate the summaries again. And um, so meaning we would need to have this data frame. So it's being done with the inla.z marginal um, to get this. And so I'm not sure if I already computed that. I did uh, apparently. So yeah. It's it's still like this. It's not exactly the same format as you had in the case of the um yeah the um summary dot fitted dot families we thought which we had in this format so five hundred and six um rows and then these as columns here in this case we have just one list for each. Um, house and the list consists of these variables. So you could, of course, make a new data frame of these 506 lists because uh, this will be uh, 506 uh, elements long. Let's see. Yes. So it's 506 uh, elements long. And so each of these elements has again a mean standard deviation and the uh, limits of the credible interval, uh, we show these, if we use the 95% um, interval. So that's what's being done here. So the transformation is in and out of the marginal and then extracting those summary values for each um, transformed marginal distribution um, with the n dot z marginal. And because it's a list, um, the author uses as apply here to get a vector of all those means and those lower and upper limits. And then again, um, the um, resulting uh, limits are projected again. But actually, I have the same remark here because um, it's still, well, it's even a larger spread in this case because it's not log transformed anymore so we have uh, essentially the uh, spatial variation between housing price and lower and upper limits and i think by that we have uh, come to the end i think this is quite challenging if you're not used at doing this uh, i'm not using this very regularly at all. So it's uh, each time again, uh, having a, a look at, at how this is all, uh, at how this works. And um, But it's good that there's a lot of um, documentation available. So do you have any questions? Um, okay, uh, that was, um... 
very uh, informative. So, um, just uh, why we are using this BYM model? Do you know I why? Why we do this? Uh, well, it's not, I think, um, well, here they say a commonly used one. It's commonly used. I think essentially uh, this is because it's really fit for annual data because it's based on neighborship, neighborhoods. So we had um, the chapter on neighborhood lists and matrices in chapter seven and Indeed, this um, BYM model uh, fits that nicely because it takes it really makes use of the neighborhood relations. If this is the best way to deal with it, I don't know um, in the case of aerial data, but I'm not um, that familiar with aerial data at, at processing aerial data uh, either. So um, uh, for me, this was new and it's very interesting to see how this can be done. Within now, yeah. There is another book of this um, order, so the oh. best it yeah. should, and okay. it's more about in law. Yeah, yeah, it's about the uh, the health uh, data. I think right. Is this one? Yeah. I think yes. Yeah, right. This is also very well known. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. Right. So, um...